Hello, and welcome to the Studio C Best of Christmas. We've got a brand new compilation of the best Christmas sketches from Studio C. Steven, what's your favorite part about Christmas? Is it the giving of the gifts, seeing family, or ooh, is it roasting chestnuts over an open fire? I have to say it's the gift receipts. Always ask for a gift receipt. I'll tell you something I'd never want to return. Tell me. These next Christmas sketches. All right. Let's watch them. <laughs> I say, what a wondrous morning. <laughs> you there, young man. What day is this? Why, it's Christmas Day, Mr. Scrooge! I haven't missed it! Do you know the butcher? The one with the prize turkey hanging up there? The one as big as me, Mr. Scrooge! That's the one! Go on and buy it, and you'll get a shilling! What? <laughs> Here you go! Wow! <laughs> Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's. I can't wait to see the look on his face when he says. They sold it! <laughs> Excuse me? They sold the big turkey. I mean, it is Christmas Day, sir. Oh, right, yes, of course. Um, well, I kind of had a revelation to be nicer, so I, uh, I don't really want to give that up. <laughs> A goose. A go what? Go goose? Goose. A ripe, plump goose will do nicely. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's still a bird, even if... You get two sides, sir. Sides? Two. Oh, I don't... Uh, potatoes and Yorkshire puddings. Yum. Yum. <laughs> oh, Bob Cratchit deserves those extra puddings he does. <laughs> and to drink? Every meal comes with your choice of beverage. Anything. Get anything. Just get it. Just get the puddings. <laughs> if they run out of Yorkshire pudding, they I'm They ran going... out of Yorkshire pudding! <laughs> Is it not too much to ask for a fully prepared feast to give my employee because I had a revelation to be nicer? <laughs> the spirits told me. Can I have more money? No! You know what? Never mind. Never mind. You, you there, young man. Uh, me, me, Mr. Scrooge? Yes, yes. Me, Mr. Scrooge. Yes. You! Oh, no, you don't. We're in this together now. You, shovel! Oh. Uh, go fetch that goose, boy. Fine. Bob Cratchit better love this stupid meal. <laughs> they sold the goose. Uh. Now all they've got left is a quail that was born inside out. It's more expensive. Fine. Go, you filthy urchin! Go! Oh, God. Well, it is Christmas Day, sir. Uh, the boy is right. And the three spirits of last night taught me nothing. All that matters is that Bob Cratchit and his family enjoy a proper meal today. <gasps> That's it. I'll buy the whole store. Yes! He closed up early. <laughs> he closed up early because you couldn't make up your mind, sir. The ghosts of Christmas blast! Oh! All I wanted was a goose. I would take a turkey. I would eat a pigeon. I would literally grab a pigeon from the air and put it in my mouth. But no, no, you can't do anything, can you? You little snowflake orphan! <laughs> Well, um, I've done everything a rich man can, so, um, bah humbug. Ow! Candles all the glow, they shine so bright across the snow, and church. Oh. oh, there he is. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you so much. Is that Carolers? I think so. Aww. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. 
Thank you so much. Oh, you're not done yet. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. Right, it's uh, getting a little cold, so now we're just going to... Bring us some piggy pudding, now bring us some piggy pudding, now bring us some piggy pudding and a cup of good cheer. Okay, we, we need to go now. We won't go until we get some, we won't go until we get very persistent. some, so bring some right here. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, but we don't have any figgy pudding. Sorry. So, you can leave now. All right, seriously, I'm calling the cops. I don't think that you should do that, cause we've got all of your phones tapped, and Bob will break both of yeah. your backs, so don't touch that phone. Wait, you're threatening us over pudding that no one eats? We're going to burn your house down. There's nowhere to hide in this town. No rest till we hunted you down, and you'll live in fear. What do you want from us? Please give us all of your money, and don't try anything funny. Just give us all of your money, or this dog dies right here. <gasps> no, not Rufus! No, no, no! Okay, hey, 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 Right, get out of here! How dumb do you think that we are? We know that you drive a Jaguar. Now give us the keys to your car and we'll be on our way. I told you not to buy that car. It makes you a target. I'm sorry, but I'm... There! Just kidding, you really are dumb. Did you really think we'd end with that one? Now give us your child's trust fund and all of your assets. Oh, it's, it's his future, man. Yeah, it's... It's oh, look at the little boy. And I just... He's only one. There. I hope you're happy. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. <laughs> oh, oh, man. We really did have figgy pudding. Oh, every year. <laughs> Now, Stephen, was that sketch based on real life? It was. A group of insistent carolers stole my trust fund as a young boy, thus necessitating my lucrative career in sketch comedy. And that is true. You know what else is true? Kids make the darndest Christmas ornaments. Don't they? <laughs> like these ones. <laughs> OK, guys, the tree's ready to be decorated. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mom, we, we made ornaments in my class at school. Can I put mine on the tree? Sure. Me too? Yeah. Me too? Yes, of course. I love your homemade ornaments. <laughs> so what did you guys make? A chicken. Fun. What'd you make it out of? Popsicle sticks? Nope. A chicken. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> do, do you like it? let you handle raw meat for Christmas ornaments for any reason. Um, she said that it fulfilled the state requirements for both art and food handling. <laughs> oh, son, I just, I don't think we can hang Chris, or chicken on the Christmas tree. It, it's dripping. But I worked really hard on it. <laughs> oh, fine, 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 fine. Put it on the tree. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right by the candy canes. Five yeah. Mm. What about oh. my ornament, Mommy? <laughs> oh, Ooh. yeah. What about my ornament, Mommy? Yes, what did you make? Wow, oh, why did you make that? <laughs> like a mask. <laughs> Have you been naughty or naughty? No. <laughs> what the heck is the matter with American schools? <laughs> so can I put it on the tree? No, 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 absolutely not. It'll scare your brother. I like it. What? No, no, it's not. Hug you... me, mommy. <laughs> Oh, trust me, sweetheart, I will never forget it. Ever, e ever, ever.
Whatever. You don't like it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Put it on the tree. Invite demons into my house. What do I care? Do you want to put it on? No, no. Okay, later when you're sleeping. <laughs> So what did you make, son? Cat litter in the shape of a pentagram? <laughs> no, it's my handprint. Oh, finally, something normal that... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we now return to our feature presentation of How the Grinch Hijacked the Holidays. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps is a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. Ouch. All at once, the Grinch paled and began to convulse. That's strange, he said and started checking his pulse. Then the Grinch knew his problem, and his chest he did clutch. His heart grew three sizes, but that was one size too much. My blood isn't flowing! A doc needs to pump it! So we called 911 to come to Mount Crumpet. Help! My heart's beating fast and I feel I can't breathe! You have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy! Oh, that doesn't sound so good. Grinch's words were all slurred. We don't have much time. We must get you cured. So they put him on nitro, they put him on statins, they put him on blockers, on theaters, and aspirin. Cindy Lou entered. She was really quite hurried. I'm here! She said. Terribly worried. The doctor sighed. See, Grinch's heart is a muscle, but it's enlarged and it won't let his blood hustle. That scared Cindy Lou, and she said, All is lost. He learned how to love, but it came at what cost? Doctor. Interjected young Dr. Katoxian. The Grinch is having a mitocardial infarction. Blast. Said the doctor. He could drop on a dime. He's young and deserves more time, time, time. Doctor, refocus. The Grinch's heart is too big. You're right. Hand me that scalpel and that thing of a chick. They acted quickly, and Cindy Lou was glad to see that they performed a successful angioplasty. When the Grinch awoke from his pectoral affliction, <laughs> he was given a list of dietary restrictions. I want you off carbs, I want you off sweets, I want you off flimflams, I want you off meats. But Doc, was my new Christmas spirit at fault? Yes, it was, and perhaps you eat way too much salt. Personal space, Cindy. And now that his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. It's your Grinch! Don't touch me. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feasts. But he, doctor's orders, did not eat the roast beast. Coming up next, find out what happens when Kevin's cousin Melvin is left behind at Christmas. It's Home Alone 16, layover in Delaware. Thank you all for coming to our company Christmas party. <laughs> um, I just wanted to take a second and recognize our coworker and my personal friend, Eric. Yeah. Um, many of you know Eric for his bright smile. <laughs> but behind that smile, we know there's a guy that's had a really hard year. <sighs> Beyond just the demands of his job, Eric's car got wrecked earlier this year, his insurance wouldn't cover it, and, well, you know the rest. <laughs> it, was re it was really bad, right? <laughs> Thanks, man. It's, uh, it's been tough. We know. And so, in the spirit of Christmas, we decided to pool our resources together and get you something really special. <laughs> and we hope that this little gift will be the key to unlock a much better year for you and steer you, <laughs> steer into happier times for wheel. <laughs> okay. 
I'll stop toot my own horn here and give you your gift. <laughs> Spoiler alert, you won't be needing gas. <laughs> Right? No. Yeah. Yes. yes. You did yeah. not have. We to wanted to though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Over that. <laughs> it's a toothbrush. An electric toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to get you something you could use. You got me a toothbrush. Oh no. No, he doesn't like it. What? No, he loves it. Look at him. He is dumbfounded with joy. <laughs> did, did you guys think that I like needed a toothbrush? Yes. Yes. Yes, you're very easy to shop for. Yeah. I already have a toothbrush. Uh, okay, an electric toothbrush. Come on. <laughs> what What did you think you were getting, Eric? I thought you were gonna get me the keys to a car. A, a car? car? What? What? Why would you think that? Y you said I wouldn't need gas. Well, yeah, it's a toothbrush. An electric toothbrush. Wait, no, wh wh why did you say s key and unlock and steer and wheel and horn? And spoiler. I don't know, I was just trying something. I think it worked. It Those are all puns about cars! Oh. Oh, oh you guys. You guys, we made him think he was getting a car. Here, Eric, I want you to have this. It's a $15 Target gift card. It still has 988 on it. Is this, is this supposed to make me feel better? Yes. yes. And Amped. here's a jacket that we got for you. Oh, no. <laughs> he just yeah. took it off. No, wait, here, let me get my car keys out of the pocket. <laughs> yeah, and you already got the Target gift card. I, so. I don't want any of these things. <laughs> then what do you want, Eric? All I want is a ride to work so I don't have to walk two miles every day. Oh, okay. You are such a needy roommate. <laughs> Megan, have you ever had a needy roommate? Oh yeah, my old roommate used to be so needy. She was always on my case, like, Megan, did you do your homework? Megan, it's time for bed. Megan, your father and I love you very much. Like, ugh, I get it, you're needy. I think you and I had the same roommate. But hey, at least we never had to live in a gingerbread house. <laughs> I did, I grew up in one. Steven, I'm trying to toss to the next sketch. <sighs> gotcha. Yeah, she's absolutely right. No one here grew up in a house made of gingerbread. Let's watch the next sketch. to the annual gingerbread house contest. Today's judge is going to be a safety inspector. Now let's give a nice Wisdom Lane Elementary School greeting to safety inspector, Tom Devlin. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hi kids, hello. I'm OSHA certified safety inspector, Tom Devlin, number one in Hoboken, Hackensack, and Hard Boiled Heights, New Jersey. <laughs> what do I do? I save lives. <laughs> Except for that one time I didn't. Let's just say it was an incident involving my safety inspecting partner, Ted Higgins. But I'm not supposed to talk about that. Unless you kids want to talk about it, because honestly, I'm like... Oh, I'm okay, not... all right. Let's just get started with the gingerbread houses. All right. Maria, why don't you go first? Come on. Maria! I went with a traditional model for my gingerbread house. I used marshmallows and candy canes, and inside I used sprinkles, and I made Condemned. it Condemned! Why? 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 You got a load-bearing candy cane wall. That's complete sugar and a total safety violation. I want you to pretend that this gummy bear is someone that you love. Let's say his name's, I don't know, Ted Higgins. Now, do you think that your gingerbread house is safe, little girl? Mm-hmm. Tell Ted it's safe. Tell Ted it's safe like I did. Hello, little gummy bear. I made you this house. It's yummy. This book represents a light snowfall. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, it's like losing Ted all over again. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Devlin, this is a Christmas competition, uh -huh. okay? It's just for fun. They get an A no matter what. I'm sorry. I just take safety very seriously. But in safety, if you are crying, you are dying. All right, who's next, kids? Okay. Come, come on, Tyler. I don't No, I don't it's okay. Want, it's okay. okay. It's okay. What's your foundation made of here, little Mikey? Uh, it's it's uh, Tyler. Um, and my my mother said that I should use fondant. <laughs> well, she was wrong. Oh, oh. Just as wrong as I was on that fateful night in 1995 when I sent Ted Higgins to inspect the Hoboken Community Center. Uh, are you okay? Let me ask you something. Do you think that your fondant foundation is earthquake safe? Uh, well, there aren't any earthquakes in New Jersey. That's so... what I thought. Oh. That's what we all thought. <laughs> Little Timmy, I want you to pretend that this gummy bear is someone you care about very deeply. <laughs> Let's say his name's, I don't know, Ted Higgins. And let's say his job's, I don't know, a little safety inspector. Oh. Do you think that your house is earthquake safe? Uh, yeah. It's 2 a.m. A light snowfall has just started. Ted climbs. Oh, don't. Oh. Ted enters the Hoboken Community Center on your orders. And oh no. It's an earthquake! Oh, oh, oh. Mom, you lied about the fondant! <laughs> it's like losing that all over again. Okay. This is a Christmas competition, and you are using it to sort through some stuff, and now is not the time. Okay? Here, let's have Sophia go. She is our star student. Come on. No, yep, come on. Yep, come on. Sophia. Sophia. It's okay. Come on. Just. Well, this looks promising. Solid foundation, reinforced joists. There's only one problem. No lightning rod. Why would I need a lightning rod? They say in the moments before the light snowfall began and the earthquake rocked Hoboken, New Jersey, my safety inspecting partner and best friend Ted Higgins climbed to the roof of the community center where he was struck by lightning. You think the gingerbread house is safe, little Sophia? Um, I, I think you're being too hard on yourself and none of this is actually your fault. You oh, it's just like it was in 1995. Sorry. So on this night in 1995, uh -huh. there was a snowfall. Yeah, there was a snowfall. An earthquake. Yeah, there was an earthquake too. And lightning. Yeah, there was lightning as well. All at 2 a.m. Yeah, 2 a.m. And I should have seen it all coming. There is literally no way you could have seen that coming. No. Because safety affects everybody, Mrs. Durkin. I hope you kids all learn that today. Because I have dedicated my life to protecting the people of this community. I know where all the hazards are. <laughs> oh no! I'm going out just like that did! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I understand safety now! This sweet and special time of year We bring our precious loved ones near Trim the tree and hang the lights We're filled with love this joyous night A family comes from far and wide we're surely glad they're by our side. A 
Christmas time is a gift from heaven, but demons sent our cousin Kevin. Merry Christmas to everyone but Kevin. He grew that wispy creeper stash when he was just 11. If Christmas is a time when that one cousin will be near, then we're so glad that Christmas only happens once a year. Christmas turkeys in the oven as we avoid our creepy cousin. He's family, so we love him, but his presence freaks us out somewhat. Oh, hang your stockings, say your prayers, cause Kevin's sleeping on the stairs. Yes, Santa comes by morning light, but Kevin sees you sleep at night. Merry Christmas, he knows where you're all sleeping. Just like his infection, he's the gift that just keeps giving. Can't hold a conversation without whispering in your ear. We're deeply grateful Christmas only happens once a year. Ooh, who let Kevin hang the mistletoe? Ooh, his gifts are hard. Cousin Kevin, his mom and dad are fine, so how the heck did this guy happen? There's something slightly off about his brand of Christmas cheer. We're just so grateful Christmas only happens once a year. Well, Merry Christmas, you're my favorite, aren't you? We're immensely grateful Christmas only happens once a year. Oh, Bonnie, this is the perfect present. Well, oh. I know how much you hate trying to barbecue outside. What with us living in the frigid north and all. Oh. <laughs> You're so thoughtful. Oh. Mm. Mm. Now, open your present. Oh, all right. There you are. Let's see what we have here. Oh, what could this be? It's a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> A paint roller. You keep saying how you want me to paint the kitchen, and now you can do it. There's also a gift card in there so you can buy the paint. Yeah. And if there's any money left over and you want to get us a new power saw, then... What's wrong, dear? Nothing. Okay, good. Of course something's wrong. Huh? Honey, you always get me the worst gifts. I'm sorry, what? I mean, we're talking hundreds of disappointing Christmases. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? I'm Santa Claus. My name literally means best gift giver ever. It literally means Saint Claus. Tomatoes. I've built my life on this. Every gift I've gotten you was golden. Oh, every gift? A dustbuster? <laughs> You love cleaning. Homemade coupons for free hugs? You love hugs. Batman and Robin? You, you love the $5 bin at Walmart. Unbelievable! I'm sorry, okay? I get letters all year long from children who tell me exactly what they want. With you, though, it's always subtle hinting. Oh. Was I subtly hinting that I wanted to take part in your stupid love language experiment last year? No, I've already admitted that that was a terrible idea. Oh, I have it right here. No. Oh, here it is. You are the most beautiful woman in this, the most desolate place on earth. So to be clear, your language is not words of affirmation. Fine. Point taken. I guess I'm just the worst husband ever. Despite being immortal, owning a fleet of flying reindeer, oh, and filling every child in the world with unspeakable joy. You 
need to watch your tone, okay? You are always so irritable Christmas mornings. You're like Chris Cranky. I just ate 12 billion cookies and I'm coming off the craziest sugar high you've ever seen. <laughs> Not to mention the elves are unionizing. Of course I'm Chris Cranky. Oh, blah, blah, blah. My life is so hard working one day a year. Uh, a 24-hour day. And yet... With 364 days off, you still can't find a better gift for your wife than a Home Depot gift card! Now, I don't need this. I'm going sledding with Blitzen. <sighs> Sweetheart, I'm sorry. I didn't... Sweet gingerbread, I almost forgot. I got you another present this year. Oh? Yes. It's a bathroom scale. <laughs> I'm gonna go sleep in the workshop. Wow, a bathroom scale. I wonder if a man wrote that last sketch. It's nice to know that even though Santa is a magical being with infinite power, even he has trouble shopping for women. Let's see if we can get a little female perspective when it comes to Christmas shopping from the ladies of the Most Organic Vlog. Hey yo. Hi there, I'm Sawyer, and I'm a cage-free cage builder. And I'm Madison, and I'm a professional Twitter complainer. I like complain about things on Twitter, and then they send me free things. As an example, I tweeted yeah. at Allegiant Airlines, and I said, your flight is terrible. I never got my luggage, even though I did. Wow. And they sent me a plane. Like so, a full plane. They sent me a full plane. Hashtag jet it and forget it. So welcome back. Our first vlog did soups well. Yeah, we were like totes surprised yeah, by the success. Yeah, we got like 10K more Insta followers. Like, boom. I got like 11K actually. That, that, that's great. That's not where I place my value, so. So we're so excited for Christmas time, you guys. Christmas is the best time of year. There's yes. family, there's friends, and there's a lot of food that will make you fat, so you better not get fat. Everyone gets fat at Christmas time. So here's our tips about staying healthy through Christmas time. Exercising is my fave. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for years. It is my stress relief. We have a list of five things that we are obsessors of. Number five yeah. is my new workout clothes. Oh, workout clothes make you work out harder, I swear. They so do. crop tops are super in. Yeah. If you can like reveal your midriff, you Just have better form and strip. also you look better. I got a crop top for my grandpa for Christmas. He's old and wrinkly. He needs it, but you oh won't wear God. it. I held it up to him while he was sleeping and I swear it slimmed him instantly. Yeah, like his cheekbones. Yeah. He looked so much better. He looked like a little baby. Your grandpa's so fat though. Number three, is a new exercise class that we went to and it made us so sore. No, like so sore. Like, yeah, it's called restorative yoga. Okay, so we walk in, it's like this high-end room. Super cute and totes retro and totes expensive, but like soup's worth it. And so we go into the room, they turn off the lights, put on relaxing music. And then we took a four-hour nap. It was a maze. I hadn't slept four hours since the night before I took the class. So we woke up and they gave us a cruelty-free, non-GMO snack. And it was crazy. When I woke up, I realized that my five-year-old niece was right next to me too, also sleeping, also her whole class, and that her teacher was the instructor. Number one tip for not getting fat for Christmas is bar class. It's Seriously. so good. Totes. Our tip for bar class is that you bring your nanny along, and as soon as you get tired, tag team her in. Yeah. For exams, I bring her into my yoga class and sometimes use her as like a yoga block. So like, I'll be trying to do a pose and I just have her get in the fetal position and like smush her down until I don't hurt. So smart, but she was like ticked. Whatever. When I cry, I lose water weight. Hashtag life hack. So what's important to remember is that diet is 80% of the things, okay? So we've been on this pollen diet for like six weeks and the doctors say that it's pulling nutrients from my brain. Yeah, but I just read most of an article that said we only use two percentage of our brain and I use 100% of my thigh gap. Think about it. Happy exercise. And like Merry Christmas too, I guess. Peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognize where we are? Oh my gosh. 
This is where we met. <laughs> That's so romantic. I love you so much. I love you too. <sighs> Ooh, it's a little chilly. Maybe we should get to the restaurant. Uh, wait, uh, Ellie, I, I wanted to ask you something, and I wanted to make sure it was right here. Oh my gosh, Bennett. Ellie, I remember the first time I ever laid eyes on you. It was on this exact bridge on a night so much like tonight, uh -huh. except it was in the middle of July, so it was so hot. Ooh. Basically the opposite of this weather. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> remember? So, uh, what were you going to ask me? <laughs> Ellie. Ellie, look, it's snowing. <sighs> Yay! Here, let me just... <laughs> me Whoa! I know, I know, I'm nervous too, I'm shaking, look at me. Ah. <laughs> shaking. Yeah. So, what, what, what was that thing you were gonna ask me? Oh, all right, we're, we're doing this, here we go. Ellie, when I think of you, I think of words like strong. Independent, a little sassy, <laughs> driven, smart, <laughs> silly. You're so. Oh, look, you're being silly right now. I'm being silly. No, give it back. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> it is a little cold, so okay. just keep it on. Uh, empathetic, patient, a cool girl, groovy, hot stuff, great cook, my partner in crime. My co-pilot, a girl, a person, a human. Uh, so, Ellie, I guess what I'm trying to ask you is... Uh, you're so scary. Will... Trayer. You... Marry me. Yes? Yes? Uh-huh. Yes! Yeah, she said yes! This is just like I imagined it would be. Oh, I, I love you so much. Oh, well, it's just stuff. At Jared, we only sell one piece of jewelry during the holidays. Well, it's just yours. The one that melts her heart. Jaspis, <laughs> so good to see you again. <laughs> we were just preparing to depart to Bethlehem to visit the manger. Forgive my truancy. Even as a wise man, it proved difficult to find the perfect gift for the Prince of Peace. Ah, yes. And what gift did you choose, Jaspis? I desired something both precious and unique. So I traveled through Egypt for three months to the land of Punt and found a bottle of frankincense. Oh, perfect gift indeed, Jaspus. <laughs> I too traveled far mm. to the Arabian Peninsula, nearly losing my life in exchange for a bottle of myrrh. How glorious. <laughs> Brothers, I have a confession to make. I'm afraid that my gift did not require a long journey. Oh? But verily, I did sell all that I own to procure this gold for our Lord, <gasps> Balthazar. <laughs> <laughs> Most impressive. Yes. <laughs> Doron, I nearly uh, forgot about you. What have you found for the Almighty One, even the King of Kings? Well, uh, I decideth to be a little more practical in my gift selection, so don't judge. <laughs> of course not, Doron. I'm sure that you spent many years selecting a humble yet appropriate item. Yes. Yes, that is, yep, sure did. <laughs> well, we better head out, brothers. <laughs> Show us the gift, Doron. Is it just me, or, or is the star starting to look a little dimmer? You know, we, we should get going. <laughs> Show us the gift, Doron. All right, fine. But remember, we all agreed beforehand on a 10 shekel limit. And none of you followed that. Relax, Doron, for it is not the price that is important, but the thought that- I got him a gift card. <sighs> That's great! Yes! Ah. Yes! Why did I put this off until the last minute? This is like the least wise thing I have ever done. I'm sure it'll be fine, Doron. No, no. You guys always do this to me. You remember last year at the Wise Men White Elephant Gift Exchange? You brought an actual white elephant. How was I supposed to compete with that? 
I'm sure your gift will get used eventually. Yes. Uh, yay, perhaps Joseph will use it to buy a new tool belt. Yes. Tool belt? Or as a re-gift. <sighs> uh, um, but, but in any case, brethren, we must depart. No, I can't show up to the manger with this. Mary's gonna be like, gold, frankincense, myrrh, gift card? Okay. Wow, what a perfect gift for my son, AKA the most important person ever. Right. Settle down, Doron. Just make sure that you give it with <laughs> Even the, the shepherd boy is gonna one-up me with a cute, adorable baby wool hat he made. Man, they're gonna call me a fool man after this. Look. I'll tell them we went half season on the merch. Trust me, he'll know that we didn't, okay? I mean, I just gotta pray that this gift is good enough to- Wait, this expires 1 AD. That's today! I gotta come up with something else, out of my way! What are we going to do, Jaspers? They're expecting four gifts. You need a fourth gift, you say? Let's take the little drummer boy. Get out of here while Doran's distracted. Yes. Go, 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 go. Hey guys, I did it! The perfect gift for... Guys? Guys? Hey! Oh, I see how it is. So you're the three wise men now, huh? Yeah, like that'll catch on. Y'all gonna miss me? Megan, is a gift card a good gift, yes or no? No, absolutely not. It says, I want to give you something with the same value as cash, but I want to control where you spend it. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah. I would much prefer, like, a honey-baked ham covered in gold foil. Ooh, I think I'd want one of those little foot massager things with the little fish inside of it. Oh, yeah, very thoughtful, very yeah. thoughtful. Hey, babe, you watching the new episode? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a party going on right now. I know, I'll be right there. Okay, just... Okay. Great sketch. Really funny stuff. Oh, Kesha fan 77. We meet again. I really like Studio C, yeah? Except for Steven. There it is. He's the worst. What's with this hair? What is with my hair? You're mean, Kesha fan 77. I wish I'd never been born. All right. Do what? What? You've never been born. Who are you? I'm Clarence, your guardian angel. And tonight you get your wish. Let's see what life would be like without you. I wasn't being serious, man. Wait for it. It's coming. Just be patient. Ah! Oh, oh, my yeah. insides. How did that happen? Oh, don't worry, oh. you'll get used to it. Oh. Hey, you recognize this place? This is where the studio used to be. Yes, but without you, there was no show. <sighs> they tore down the studio to make way for a bad part of town. What? Yeah. Hey, it's Matt. He'll know what's going on. Matt. Hey, Matt, can I talk to you? Just, it's Steven. Can you talk right now? What? Why doesn't he recognize me? Because you don't exist in this world, Steven. <sighs> Just look at him. The sad eyes, small frame, the tiny prepubescent body. So what's different? I was getting to that. Without you, there was no show. And he never did sketch comedy. Oh, man. I ruined his comedy dream? Yes. Asterisk. <coughs> what was that? What? Uh, no, I mean, well, he's got a leading role in a very popular sitcom, but you're right, no sketch comedy. What channel is he on? NBC. Isn't that a way bigger deal? When? No, it's, I mean, it's kind of, well, hey, look, it's Adam and Natalie. Adam, Natalie, hey, I'm so glad I found you guys. I really need your help. Uh, do I know you? Y yes, I'm Steven. We work together every yeah. day. No, I, I think you've got the wrong people. Yeah, sorry. What? No, what? <laughs> What's wrong with them? Well, in this world, they work 80 hours a week for an evil company. Oh, man, what company? Habitat for Humanity. Clarence, that's a charity. Really? Oh, I, I thought it was like an evil people zoo. You are a bad angel. You're a bad angel. I'm starting to think this world is actually better off without me. What? No, maybe. Uh, oh, hey, look, it's now. Now, you see, without you, she eats all her meals from a dumpster. Yeah, she already did that. Well, that's... That's true, yeah, that's true. At least now she has a shopping cart. Ah-ha! <laughs> Corn! Cool. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. Is this a bag full of caviar? This part of town isn't even that bad. It's weird that she chose the corn. Right? Mm. All day corn. Mm. Corn for days! Oh. What? Whitney! That's Whitney! She'll remember me! All right. Oh, Whitney. God. Who's this dude with my wife? Well, that's her new husband. He's a billionaire philanthropist rugby star. He's also named Stephen. Boo! Jimmy Stewart's wife became an old hag! And Whitney said she didn't want to have any kids! Well, not your kids. Okay, why are you showing me this? You're supposed to convince me that I do want to be born. Well, that was my plan, but I'm starting to have second thoughts. Okay, well, too bad. Because despite appearances, I know my friends are worse off without me. Oh, <laughs> so rich, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, buddy! Super chance! Super chance! It's beautiful! <laughs> Again. I want to live again, please. Let me live again. Um, am I back? Does the snow mean I, I need something less ambiguous? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna assume I'm back. All right, go! Cool. Guys! Guys! Steven! I've been looking all over for you! Yeah, man, did you hear? Kesha Fan 77 died from a horrible fungus. Oh, wow. Thank you, Clarence. Wait a second, where's Mal? More corn! Mm -hmm. More corn! More corn. Look, Steven, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Oh! Oh, it hurts so bad! Oh, make it stop! Thank you. It was so thoughtful of you to join us on this trip down Christmas memory lane. Thank you all so much. Happy holidays to everyone. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye bye. It's Christmas time at Studio C. So leave your gifts beneath the tree. Bring your giant family. Invite your favorite friends to see. Santa's got a gift for me. Dear Santa, what'll it be? Create with me a Yuletide memory. Create with me an everlasting memory. Create with me an everlasting Yuletide memory. Let's laugh and play in moonlight snow. I want to steal a kiss under the mistletoe. Create once more a Yuletide memory.